<laughs> Yo, this album is crazy. You know, I know it's not the typical thing. Most of y'all probably won't even listen to it. But if you can buy into the whole concept of the album, if you understand what it's about, then it's a great fucking album. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Oh, man. Like, it's nothing like uh, A Thousand Forms of Fear. But critics would say it's a reject pile of songs, basically, that nobody wanted. But what the minute I seen the title... And then I started to like look at the track list and listen to the songs that you basically get when you purchase the album off iTunes. I kind of knew where she was going. You know what I mean? And if you listen to a lot of the songs, you could tell the artists that she basically was in the studio working with and the songs that she wanted the artist to have, but they passed on. To get this out the way real quick, I got to say Adele is stupid as hell for passing on track one and track two. Bird said free and alive, Adele was stupid. Both those songs would have fit the mode of the album. And this is why a lot of fans felt like even me with 25, it didn't have that same effect as 21. You know what I mean? So you could tell the direction that 25 was going to go in, but Adele didn't believe in that because she got, I guess, information from her camp that said that that sound is not really in no more. She went with more of a poppier type sound and that ain't what fans wanted from her. But anyway, moving on. This album just, it was dope. It was four tracks I didn't fuck with. Uh, Move Your Body would sound like it was meant for Shakira. Uh, Cheap Thrills is a party single. Rihanna turned that down. Uh, Sweet Design and Space Between. Those are the four tracks that I, I, could, I really couldn't get with those four tracks right there. But, uh, Overall, I mean, she's written for a lot of people. Beyonce, Rihanna, Adele, Kelly Clarkson, Neo, you know, etc. But the concept, I like the concept. You know, it opens up with Bird Says Free. Uh, Adele actually recorded this song, but she tossed it. She didn't put it on the album. It's just basically um, talking about how a person finds themselves as a writer and a singer and just believing in themselves. It goes into track two, which is Alive. It's basically a empowering record. You know, pretty much that's what it's all about. To be clear, Dale passed on that as well. Uh, One Million Bullets. That has like a... Um, let me see. It's a type of song to where it's definitely on repeat. It's just her telling her, her dude that she would, you know, she want to be um, the protector of him and, you know... Everything like that, you know, she just wants to always be there for him, which is a good, you know, dark type record. It was pretty dope. Track four, I didn't fuck with. Going on to track five, another uh, empowerment type record was meant for Rihanna. You definitely can tell once you hear it. And some of the songs, she actually, the way she uses her voice, it's kind of sound like the artist a little bit, especially Adele and um, Rihanna a little bit. You know what I mean? Even the Beyonce joint. But moving on to Cheap Thrills, didn't like it. Party single, definitely Rihanna turned that joint down. Reaper is kind of a pop single. The song Kanye produced. A lot of people don't really like it, but I kind of enjoyed it. It was meant for Rihanna. You know, um, it's basically about cheating death. Kind of crazy when you listen to the lyrics to it. I was like, wow, she's crazy. Uh, going into House of Fire, it's just basically a state of mind. It's catchy as hell, though, you know what I mean? Um, she actually used herself as a metaphor saying she's the house is on fire and don't want to be put out and i was like oh it's pretty different going into footprints which is one of the favorite my favorite songs off this album it was meant for beyonce you know what i mean it's a, a metaphor for a relationship and i thought that was pretty decent actually this song was done in a beyonce session so i don't know if it was for her last album beyonce you know the joint she put out or is it for an upcoming one who knows but that was this song was created in that session Going into track 10, Sweet Design, then fuck with it. Broken Glass is a nice ballad record, you know, to close out the album. Um, what well, a second to last song, you know, on the album. And the last track is Space Between. I didn't really like that record. Don't really know who it's for. But overall, um, this being her seventh album, I did buy A Thousand Form of Fear. I thought the album was incredible. This album is dope based on the concept. So if you listen to it, if you a fan of pop music or not and you don't get it, you got to go into it, listening to it at the aspect of she's actually playing a role. It's like her pitting or getting into the shoes of all the artists she writes for. You know what I mean? Look at it kind of like a movie in a sense. That's the title. This is acting. It's pretty dope, man. It's an impersonal type 
album. You know what I mean? She definitely has some vocal power. Her crack voice to me is amazing because a lot of people don't really like the way her voice cracks. But if you listen to it on certain songs, it kind of gives you chills in a good way. You know, especially on Footprints. Like that shit, that definitely needs a video for it. That should be in a, a type of romantic, not comedy, but a romantic type film where if it's like a, a scene where somebody's, you know, sad or wondering about their significant other and they walk in kind of like, I guess, on a beach or whatever, this should be in the background because I visioned the video in my head, listen to the song like, yo, I definitely think that this needs a video for it. I envisioned it as if I was an artist, you know what I mean, creating a video. You know, it's just like you certain songs just hit me and it's like this needs a video. I don't know what she like. She needs a video. And we know her as an artist. She's kind of shy. She's insecure. You know what I mean? She kind of odd in a way, but she don't hide that. I think that's the thing that was intriguing to me about Sia. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, what, why does she always wear those wigs? And why does she kind of don't move or she does it in a different way? And so I started researching her and I found that out. I was like, wow, like she never wanted to really be in the spotlight. That's why on her album cover, she's never there. It's always somebody else. You watch her videos, she's not in them. You know, it's just a, a person that really just wanted to be out of the spotlight as far as a writer, but just decided for some reason to get into the music business and release music, but kind of don't really want to be in the public eye in a sense. Adele kind of has that same mentality too, if you read the Rolling Stone article. But I fuck with this album. It's pretty dope, man. The um, CD opening will be up sometime this weekend. But I give it an 8 all the way through. From the rating, I like 8 of the songs, and the production was on point. It's an 8 as well. It was different, but I was expecting it to be, you know, something unique and i look at this album as it's unique in its own right you know because she didn't have to do this she could have scrapped all them songs and rewrote a whole album i think that's what some of the critics and reviewers are saying about it. it's like you can't compare this to her first body or well, her sixth album because it's more her and this is just basically a pile of b-side songs that she put out you know what i mean but i don't look at it like that i think the concept goes well and if you go into it understanding that it's a concept album then i think you will appreciate it even more and it does make you wonder like wow if these songs are meant for those artists and you look at their career in the last couple of years did they make a mistake did adele make a mistake with a couple of records did rihanna make a couple of mistakes with some records you know what i mean you gotta look at that i look at it like adele messed up beyonce kind of messed up and rihanna messed up those three artists messed up because these records are incredible but it's just like if she can believe in the records and put them out and use her voice you know with her writing and y'all are artists but got a writer to write the record but y'all didn't believe in the record i don't really understand that because rihanna album would have been ill i haven't heard it yet but the songs that was meant for her these would have go these would have be the records you know the essential pop records that will make fans you know chime into that so when you go into the album listen to it Listen to it for the perspective of Sia herself, but then listen to it for the perspective of the song that was meant for that artist because you know they voice because they have carried on that song in a proper way. That's just what I thought, man. If y'all watch this, I appreciate it. If y'all didn't, it is what it is, but I talk about what I like. One.